May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. March 28, 2024 Holy Thursday, Evening Mass of the Lord's Supper Our reflection for today, Holy Thursday, will be taken from the first reading, from the book of Exodus. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord also said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month will be for you the beginning of the months. It will be first in the months of the year. Speak to the entire assembly of the sons of Israel, and say to them, On the tenth day of this month, let everyone take a lamb by their families and houses. But if the number is less than may suffice to be able to consume the lamb, he shall accept his neighbor, who has been joined with his house according to the number of souls that may suffice to be able to eat the lamb. And it shall be a lamb without blemish, a one-year-old male. According to this rite, you shall also take a young goat. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. And the entire multitude of the sons of Israel shall immolate it toward evening. And they shall take from its blood, and place it on both the door posts, and the upper threshold of the houses, in which they will consume it. And that night they shall eat the flesh, roasted by fire, and unleavened bread with wild lettuce. Now you shall consume it in this way, you shall gird your waist, and you shall have shoes on your feet, holding staves in your hands, and you shall consume it in haste. For it is the Passover that is the crossing of the Lord. And I will cross through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from men even to cattle. And I will bring judgments against all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. But the blood will be for you as a sign in the buildings where you will be. And I will see the blood, and I will pass over you. And the plague will not be with you to destroy, when I strike the land of Egypt. Then you shall have this day as a memorial, and you shall celebrate it as a solemnity to the Lord, in your generations, as an everlasting devotion. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. What shall I render to the Lord for all the things he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I am your servant, I am your servant, and the son of your handmaid. You have broken my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. I will sacrifice to you the sacrifice of praise, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the sight of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, for I have received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was handed over, took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which shall be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Similarly also, the cup, after he had eaten supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord, until he returns. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
before the feast day of the Passover, Jesus knew that the hour was approaching when he would pass from this world to the Father. And since he had always loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And when the meal had taken place, when the devil had now put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he came from God and was going to God, he rose up from the meal, and he set aside his vestments, and when he had received a towel, he wrapped it around himself. Next he put water into a shallow bowl, and he began to wash the feet of the disciples, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was wrapped. And then he came to Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, Lord, would you wash my feet? Jesus responded and said to him, What I am doing, you do not now understand. But you shall understand it afterward. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you will have no place with me. Simon Peter said to him, Then Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is washed need only wash his feet, and then he will be entirely clean. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew which one would betray him. For this reason, he said, You are not all clean. And so, after he washed their feet and received his vestments, when he had sat down at table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak well, for so I am. Therefore, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I have given you an example, so that just as I have done for you, so also should you do. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How does reflecting on the connection between the Passover feast and the sacrifice of the Lamb of God deepen your appreciation for the gift of the Eucharist in your life? This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. Exodus 12 verse 1 The Holy Triduum begins. Today, we fulfill this Old Testament passage, revealing that the Passover would become a perpetual institution. This passage concludes our first reading instruction from the Lord, given to Moses and Aaron, on how to prepare for the Israelites' liberation from Egypt. Plague after plague had been inflicted upon the Egyptians, and none of them resulted in the Israelites being set free. Therefore, the Lord instructed the Israelites to celebrate the first Passover by killing a year old lamb, sprinkling its blood on their doorposts, and feasting on the flesh in preparation for the journey to the promised land. Today, we continue this Passover celebration as we share in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, whose blood has been shed, whose flesh we consume, and who leads us through the desert of life to the new and eternal promised land of heaven. Just as the first Passover was a prefiguration of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, so also the plagues that led up to the Passover present us with much meaning. At first, all the water in Egypt turned to blood. Then frogs, gnats, flies, and pestilence covered the land. Boils covered the skin of humans and animals. Hail rained down, locusts covered the land and finally darkness covered the land for three days. None of these plagues was ultimately successful in convincing Pharaoh to let God's people go, therefore, the final plague to be inflicted was the death of the firstborn. It was the blood of the Paschal Lamb, sprinkled on the doorposts of the Israelites' houses, that signaled to the angels to pass over their homes. The plagues inflicted on Pharaoh and the Egyptians were severe. But because of their obstinacy, God continued until they changed. Recall also, that even after the Israelites were set free, 
Pharaoh changed his mind and pursued them into the Red Sea, where his army perished. Though these prefiguring events might not be that pleasant to consider, they must be reflected upon. We must see in them God's tireless and relentless efforts to set us free from sin. The obstinacy and oppression of Pharaoh are clear signs of the oppressive evil within our world today and within our own souls. When we seek to embrace the freedom to which we are called, we will be met with much temptation and oppression from the evil one, as well as from our own fallen human nature. But if we trust in God, as Moses did, then we will be given all we need to begin the journey to freedom. Most specifically, the flesh and blood of the Son of Man is our Paschal Lamb. The Eucharist, which was instituted on Holy Thursday, protects us from the final death. Consuming the body of Christ also strengthens us for our spiritual journeys. Without it, we have no protection from the evil one and lack the strength we need to be faithful on our journey. Reflect today upon God's incredible commitment to set you free. He came to earth, took on human form, offered his life in sacrifice, and now feeds you with his sacred flesh. Without the Eucharist as your spiritual food and his sacred blood covering you, you will not survive. We all need the Eucharist. We need the bread of heaven. We need the body and blood, soul and divinity of the Savior of the world. God went to the greatest length to save you. Accept his gift that we especially commemorate and participate in today. Let us pray. My sacrificial lamb, you came to earth to set us free from the oppression of the evil one and from the disorders of our fallen human nature. Please feed me today and always with your sacred body and precious blood. By the strength of this food from heaven, continue to lead me to the promised land of heaven. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.